Hello, and welcome to the third lesson in NativeLang.com's course on historical linguistics and language change. This time around, using the concepts that you learned in the last lesson, namely cognates, which are inherited words, borrowings, and chants, I want you to take a look for a minute at some basic core words from four languages. These languages are Italian, Galician, Portuguese, and Maori. These words are actually fairly representative of the relationships between these languages. Take a moment to consider which languages share a common ancestry and how closely these languages must be related. We have good grounds for considering that Portuguese and Galician are very closely related. We also have grounds for saying that Italian, Portuguese, and Galician are less closely related, but they're all related to each other. As long as we group Galician and Portuguese more closely together in this relationship, we can say that Italian, Galician, and Portuguese are all related to each other. Maori, on the other hand, doesn't seem to be related at all. So at this point, we'll set it to the side and say that it's an unrelated language. That is, it may re be related to other languages, but it is not related to Italian, Galician, and Portuguese. At least as far as we can tell from this set of words. But that's not enough. At this point, we just have a flat understanding of the relationships. We should extend this back the same way we'd do with a family tree. Now what we'll do is we'll group Galician and Portuguese together in one branch of the tree, and then in Italian in a separate branch of the tree. So now we've extended this relationship back over time. The branches that extend upwards on this diagram show you that in the past, these languages were actually more closely related to each other. In other words, they diverged from common ancestors. In the case of Galician and Portuguese, they actually diverged from a nearer common ancestor. Right, you see that note? This note here is the common ancestor of both Galician and Portuguese. Now this note here is also related to Italian. There's an even further node, meaning further back in time, that is the common ancestor of Italian, Galician, and Portuguese. Now we have two question marks here. What do these question marks mean? They're just nodes on our diagram, but they represent more than that. There's actually some language spoken in the past that must be the common ancestor of both Galician and Portuguese. Otherwise, they wouldn't be around, they wouldn't share these common cognates. So these common cognates derive from words in a single language, this single ancestor language. Now there's an even more remote common ancestor from Galician, Portuguese, and Italian, and that's a form of vulgar Latin. In at least some small way, these two languages, Galician Portuguese and Vulgar Latin, are attested. That means we have documents we can look back at, we can look today at documents that were written in those languages. We have some attestation of their existence. We know what they look like, we can see their vocabulary items in written words, and based on other evidence, we actually have some knowledge of how those words were pronounced. These were real languages that are documented. What happens when we don't have that kind of attestation? We'll have to get a little bit more innovative. We'll have to use something known as reconstruction to posit a hypothetical ancestor language that's the parent of the modern languages. In our next lesson, we'll look at how exactly we do that, and we'll go about doing two basic reconstructions to help you get an understanding for the process of how we would look back in time, how we would reconstruct an ancestor language. I hope you'll join me as we do that and gain some more perspective on historical linguistics.